Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm Rafina Antonetti. And today, um, I'm doing a part two to I Am the Bread of Life. Because yesterday, we were speaking about that. But I don't want to go on without mentioning a couple of things about Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. And he says this in John 6.35. I am the bread of life, and he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And I kept thinking and I kept, it kept coming back to my mind about the tabernacle of Moses and the showbread. And I've always been intrigued um, on how the tabernacle points to Christ. And when he says this, I am the bread of life. And I thought about the tabernacle of Moses. We see that the showbread on the table is there with 12 loaves of bread. And these 12 loaves of bread that stood for the 12 tribes of Israel were symbolic acknowledgement that God was the resource for Israel's life and nourishment. And it also served as Israel's act of thanksgiving to God. And what also intrigued me was the arrangement of the bread on the table because it was in two rows of six. And I find it even more amazing that it reminded me that there are 66 books in the Bible and how God always shows us that we need both the Old and the New Testaments in our lives in order to understand his word better. And in Leviticus 24, 8 through 9 says, Every Sabbath day, Aaron shall arrange the showbread before the Lord continually. It is an everlasting covenant for the Israelites. And the bread of the presence shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a sacred place. For it is for Aaron a most holy portion of the offerings by fire to the Lord, his portion Forever. Wow, I you know, I'm I'm reading that now and I'm just seeing how it says there, and they shall eat it in a sacred place. You know, sometimes we can um not have enough reverence where when we're in a place with God, we let our minds um distract us. Our phones could be around us. We could be praying and then we look somewhere else. And and the Bible says here, they shall eat it. Their bread, the bread of life. They shall eat it in a sacred place. This was their holy portion of the offering. That show that table of showbread was an important piece of furniture inside that holy place of the tabernacle. It was situated on the north side of the holy place, a private chamber where only the priests were allowed to enter and perform daily rituals of worship as representatives for the people. Today we can freely go before his throne of grace. And the Bible says that we are a royal priesthood. We can go before him and worship him openly. The table of showbread was a constant reminder of God's everlasting covenant with his people and his provision for the 12 tribes of Israel. 
once again represented by the 12 loaves. In John 6.35, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And later he says in verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And today, as Christians, we observe that communion. We partake of the consecrated bread to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. The table of showbread in Israel's um, worship pointed forward to the future Messiah and his fulfillment of the covenant. Covenant. Remember that Jesus said he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And the practice of our communion in worship today points backwards in remembrance of Christ's fulfillment of his covenant and the victory over death on the cross. I don't think it was a coincidence that the Lord would not allow me to go to the next I am, being that today is Good Friday. And he wants us to remember the covenant that he had made with Abraham so many, so many, so many years ago, so long ago, but he had us in mind. He had us in mind. And Hebrews 8, 6 through 7 says, But as it is, Christ has acquired a priestly ministry, which is more excellent than the old Levitical priestly ministry. For he is the mediator of a better covenant, uniting God and man which has been enacted and rests on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion for a second one or an attempt to institute another one. Why? Because according to Hebrews 10, it, was impo it, 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 it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away anyone's sin completely. But when Christ entered the world, he became that sacrifice and offering for us once and for all. So as believers under this new and better covenant, our sins are forgiven and paid for by Christ. There is no longer need to offer sacrifices. Our daily provision is now the living word of God, our bread of life, our daily bread. We have a new covenant, an everlasting covenant. God has written and continues to write his law on the hearts of his people and brings complete forgiveness for sins, for our sin. And he has raised up a faithful king from the line of David who has and will restore all that has been broken because he is the great I am who lives within us. Wow. That is powerful. And what he has done for us, no one has and no one ever will. We have an eternal, everlasting covenant with our bread of life. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord. And until we meet again, shalom.